Settle down. Rosie. Kind of surrounded there, Dad. What you got? You must have some kind of ultimate dog treat, or what's going on? Watch Jax. He 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 doesn't oh, value fingers. Baby. There you go. Oh, come on, Jax. Hold up, big boy. Can you? Can you help a little? You gotta help a little. Come on, get that leg in there. You're not in. You're not feeling it. It's too cold for you, isn't it? Alrighty, we got the house all cleaned up. What do you say we go ahead and go out and do some camping? Um, why is there so many selections here? I thought it was just olive oil. Well, how are you great and amazing, awesome, outstanding people doing on this beautiful day? I want to welcome you to Trucking with Schmidt. And we're camping. We're going camping. If you watched the video a couple videos ago, we made a first attempt at doing this and things didn't go right. We're going to go to the same location we did before, which is only about three miles away from Mapleton here, my hometown. So if things go wrong, we're good to go. And they aren't going to go wrong this time. We are fully prepared. The only thing we don't have is we are missing one German. We're going to take Opie again and uh, Jax really isn't feeling it. We were out running around earlier today. Uh, he's pretty stiff. Let's put it that way. He's kind of stiff. January 4th, our temperature is about 19 degrees right now. I was going to say 20 because it was 20 a couple minutes ago, but we're down to 19 degrees. The wind is blowing a little bit. We did get some magnificent snow on the ground, which is a first in a while. We got snow, then it all melted away. Now we have snow again. Well, believe it or not, it's only been about two weeks since we jumped out of the truck. And during that two weeks, everybody was home in the wise of Christmas break. Well, everybody went back to school and everybody went back to work today. So, it was just me. I cleaned up the house, sat around bored for a little bit, trying to contemplate on what we wanted to do tonight or what we wanted to do for a video. Because I'm trying to continue on our video series, even though we're not in the semi-truck. Camping. What style of camping? I don't know what style of camping I wanted to do. I actually thought about going over to the truck stop, setting up camp, and sleeping at the truck stop for a night. That would get you guys back into the trucks. There's not a lot of you missing the trucks, but there still is a few of you missing them, which is rightfully understood because the channel is a trucking channel. Sort of. It's a trucking channel when we're in the truck. It's not a trucking channel when we're not in the truck.
I may be wrong, but I don't think I'm supposed to see snow on my bed. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to see snow there. Go in. Come here. Come here. Your steps aren't quite high enough, so I need to lift you. Is that okay? Do I have your permission to lift you into the pickup? Yes, I do. Yes. All right. Ready? Come here. Well, we're already doing a little bit better than what we were last time. If you didn't notice, I have a buddy heater in here now. But we are camped in a campsite with electricity. So I'm going to uh, plug in an electric heater. This campground we're in right now, it has about six spots in it. Um, there's not a lot of trees. So during the summer, it makes for a brutal campground to go to if you're trying to stay cool. And then there's not a lot of hills around it. So... If you're going to camp in it during the winter, there's not a lot of wind blocks. That's what we're going to run into right now. I'm hoping for this wind to go down a little bit later on for we can light a fire. But we have a huge mess right there I need to get taken care of and start putting stuff away. This is only night number two. Attempt number two of us actually camping in this camper. And the first time was a no-go because our furnace went out. Which, by the way... You guys are amazing. There's all kinds of ideas of what that furnace could be. So I'm going to rip into that furnace the first chance I get. And we might even tinker with it tonight or maybe tomorrow while we're out here. I'm going to show you a little bit more around this park while we're here. Maybe tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow because it's getting dark now. Where I showed you there was a little bit of water right behind the camper. That's a lake. That, or a pond. That's a pond completely dried up so the county took advantage of it and started digging things up and making a little bit more fish habitat and i'll show you that tomorrow for when hopefully we can actually uh, get some moisture and we are actually getting some moisture now but get some more moisture this spring and actually fill that pond back up because it actually wasn't too bad at fishing it was only about a foot maybe two feet deep but you could bring a kid out here and they'd catch bullhead after bullhead of those right there
I got that key holder from one of you guys. I kind of like one. I want to put it in the camper, but it just kind of dawned on me. I don't have that many keys for the camper, at least. If I take it home, at least I can mount it and we can actually put vehicle keys on it. We'll go that route. A lot of stuff to put away. As for that snow that was on the pillow up there, I'm not 100% sure how snow got into the camper, let alone onto the pillow. All the ice and all the snow that's on the pickup right now, we ran in the snowstorm yesterday. Um, Bud was hanging out with some friends over in Anthem, and that's about 30 miles from Mapleton. So I ran over there, and it wasn't snowing, but when I went back over to get him, it was snowing like crazy. So maybe some of the snow just came up and inside the front of the camper. Maybe we need to put some new seals around there. We'll probably do that when we redo that roof, this roof this summer. That's about the only way I can link a snow actually getting into the camper. Because the only vent for the camper that's on the roof is right above us right here. What do you think, Opie? Put these in here. What I'm trying to do is free up this back closet for I can actually probably put a garbage can right there. So the garbage can actually would work with the two chairs in there. So I could take my collapsible table in the front closet and then that way I can hang some coats in there and such. And then just put garbage can and those two chairs right there. The camper actually does have a lot of storage in it. The trick is finding the storage and finding everything to fit just right in it. And the trick is also not to fill it. There's no reason to fill it. Like tonight, we're out here for one night and maybe most of the day tomorrow messing around. We'll have to see. But when I go on trips, like when me and Troy go to Colorado or when we go up to South Dakota ice fishing this year, and little stuff like that then yes you can load it full but for what I'm using it for just a little hobby camper by no means living in it just gotta find places for everything hmm right there probably would work pretty good and then uh, you could still just you know tap it up and take the whole case off but I kind of like that right there or we could go right there For as much as I was trying to avoid the space age look of uh, that stuff, it's kind of cold. And it's not like it's that bad. I tell you what, you can definitely tell a difference when you use it. It's this front. The front of the camper is just brutal. The wind's not hitting it from up there. The wind's hitting us from back there. And there's that zipper that runs all the way across. That lets in a lot of cold. Hopefully this will help it warm up a little bit. I don't like the look of this stuff. If you guys have watched previous videos, you guys have seen me cover this stuff up in my old setup in the truck camper. I'm not gonna do that to this stuff, but at least we have curtains up here now. That's kind of nice.
you see now right now some of you are wondering what is this crazy man doing with wiring this camper came with an antique or an old converter that quit working within the first well we never camped in it we were just setting things up and the converter fried and it was fine because that converter was extremely old and then I thought about putting another one in it and I realized no I want this camper to run 100% on battery power because we're using this power box right here to power the camper basically the two lights and once we get the furnace running it works great it really does <sighs> So what I'm setting the camper up for is basically shore power. That cord that you see, the extension cord end, that just simply runs outside to the outside plug-in and that comes out the side of the camper. And that's just the way I'm going to set this whole setup in, or set it up. That's how I'm going to set it up, is you can have shore power coming in. We're going to put a um, power strip up here that we can plug things into if we want to go that route or if we're in an actual campground. But we're still not able to camp into our off-grid areas out in the Les Hills right now because it's not January 10th. And hunting season doesn't get over till January 10th. And that's when Troy says I can go back in and camp where I want to. It works out okay. I have a plug-in for the truck. I'm going to have a plug-in for this electric heater. I'm going to see if the electric heater can even keep us warm. Right now we're below 19 degrees. I don't know what we are. This is all trial and error. That's it. <laughs> He's snoring. Fine, you quit snoring when I start recording. Okay, pretty curtain. Your borderline happened to go, I think. I don't really need pretty. I'm not looking for pretty. I don't see why I would need curtains in the front up here. Anybody home? No, go away. It's cold out here. What are you doing? What's well, going? It's going okay. I had to put the. Uh, you by yourself? Not uh, Opie. Opie. I had to put the silver stuff up because it was getting kind of chilly in here. Oh, I bet it made it make a difference. It did. I was just getting ready to tell them that I didn't show it before I put it in. Yeah, it went from 55 to 70. Oh, wow. That's good reflective stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I jumped up. I'm rewiring the camper, so if you don't hear from me by tomorrow at some point, just know that I burnt down. Dad was coming in from the timber. He was out there messing around with a couple of his buddies who were out there hunting. Troy, he's still hunting. He just didn't want to go right now. I don't know if he's done. He's only got about six days left of black powder season, but he just didn't want to go, and I'm not making him go by no means. That was Dad. If you're new to the channel, that was Dad. He stopped by. I'm going to go ahead and finish this wiring up. I wasn't kidding, though, when I told him. We're running just this Mr. Buddy heater, and I've got her knocked down to low now. But since I put that, gosh, I cannot remember. Is it part? I can't remember what you guys call that silver stuff. But ever since I put it up, it jumped from 55 degrees in here to 70 degrees right now. That's pretty impressive. Listen to that wind, Opie. Pretend that hole's not there. And voila, I did pretty. You have all of this. You gotta be right beside me. That's how much I love you, Opie. Yes, you're a very clingy German. But name a German Shepherd that's not clingy. I love you too, big boy. All right, I'm gonna shut the buddy heater off and we're just gonna go to electric heat there and actually see if it actually pulls enough and actually warms this camper up enough to where we could just use the electric heat. Once we fix the furnace, then we use the furnace, but since we're in the electric spot, why pass it up? 
if it can keep the camper. I don't need it to be 68. If it can keep the camper at 55 or 60 degrees. If it could keep it at 60 degrees, I'm perfectly fine with 60 degrees. 68's kind of warm. Let's see what it can do. It's holding its own. If I didn't have the Reflectix, that's the name of that silver stuff. If I didn't have the Reflectix up, I don't think it could be able to do it. But it's holding its own right at 58, 59 degrees. It's been one hour since we messed with that there. I'm getting kind of hungry, so I'm going to start some supper. It's going to be our first time cooking in the camper now. We're actually going to cook in the camper. Me. I'm going to cook. Is anyone scared yet? Don't get too excited. It's in a bag. I can't mess that up. I'm going to try to take things a little bit easy here. Usually when I cook, you guys are always yelling at me, turn your heat down, turn your heat down. So we're going to turn the heat down. What we're having tonight is uh, sesame chicken. I can't read the rest. Is anyone else's eyes getting to the point to where they're just null and void if it's dark at all? If it just gets dark, there's just not enough light, I have to have glasses all the time. They're sitting at home beside my chair, by the way, if you're wondering. Don't worry, I can see when I drive, I can see everything, I just can't see when I'm reading. I know, it doesn't look pleasant, but when it's all done, it will look pleasant. That is good. That is very good. Good as Do me a favor, don't tell Warden I stole one of her pans.
because I'm going to keep it. Is it time to get up? Okay. Well, we don't plan on using the electric heater much, and it shuts off. It'll run for a couple minutes, then shut off, but it still held the camper right around 55 to 58 degrees last night, so every time I'd wake up to let Opie out or to let myself out, which seems to be a lot, I'd fire up the buddy heater, warm things up really good, and then... Uh, climb back in the bed, shut it off, climb back in the bed. The internet tells me it's some kind of uh, overheating thing with the uh, electric heater. Like I said, we don't really plan on using the electric heat much anyway. You get bored in this thing. Yeah, you do. You get bored in it versus the truck. suppose I put some pants on or go out and go for a walk okay Last night when I was telling you about uh, this all being silted in and only about a foot deep, it's because I think it was 2019 when the river flooded and uh, it just filled everything in over here, filled the entire river, or filled the entire pond that sits right here in. River's looking a little low. It's looking a lot low.
That is one stubborn dog. Every time I let him out last night, he was trying to get into the back seat of the pickup. This whole walk, he couldn't get back to the pickup fast enough. We get back to the pickup and he just goes and stands by the door. I go to go to the back door of the camper. Nope. He just stood by the back door. So, we'll put him in there while we rip stuff down. Isn't that just awesome? That's flat out the coolest part to this camper is the teardown. I'll go outside, I'll clamp down four clamps, and it's done. Teardown goes pretty quick in this thing, and that's what I really love about it, versus when we're in the big camper. Well, Sarah and Paige are sick back home. You're thinking, don't go home, you'll get sick. And yeah, my immune system, see, it's a little bit better, usually. But I can't leave them sick. I gotta run down to the pharmacy for them, grab them some stuff from the grocery store, you know, the whole uh, taking care of sick people things. This video's probably already long enough, so we'll just cut it off. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you're new to the channel, go ahead, throw a like down there, or maybe even subscribe. Have patience. They will get better, I do promise. You guys stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.